is, what, is, what do you feel like getting here where you're being inducted into the Astronaut Hall of Fame? Well, honestly, it's not about me. Seriously. And it, it, I thought that way I would probably set it too high of a standard for myself. So I'm here, I believe, as a person to communicate the message of the greatness of space exploration and for young people the importance of choosing careers in math, science, and engineering. You can be an astronaut someday if you work hard enough, if you choose the right career. But if you decide you don't want to be an astronaut, there's career fields all throughout the space program. In fact, almost any field that you can study touches the space program somehow. Even if it's if you want to study law, or medicine, or even art or history, all of this touches the space program. So I think we can have better awareness throughout the country of what space does for us in general as the people on the planet. Now, one question about your background. This is going to the uh, Syracuse TV stations. H how much did growing up in Elmira and uh, Syracuse help you and get you to where you are today? Yes, well, growing up in upstate New York, I believe, was a big factor in the direction that I went. Uh, Elmira, New York is the home of the National Story Museum. So when I was a child at summer camp, seven weeks every summer of camp, watching the glider soar, I never had a chance to fly until I was an adult, but just knowing that that opportunity was there and, and watching the glider soar in the clouds, it was just something I wanted to do. And um, my dad took the family to the airport to watch airplanes take off and land. That's always, a, it's, it's true, but it's such a great story. You can do simple things like that. My mom used to the library and dropped us off for the afternoon. And I found the sun flying, and that's really the seeds that were set. I didn't have some big expensive program that I was involved in. I just learned to love flying through simple everyday life. And, and then my last question here. Tell us a little bit about the history of uh, what you're wearing here, some significance to that. Well, the gold pin that I'm wearing is a logo that was designed by the original Mercury 7 astronauts. They wanted a logo, um, I don't remember what year, but back in the early days. And the way that the tradition has evolved is when you are hired as an astronaut, you are presented with a silver pin when you graduate from your astronaut candidate training. After you fly your first mission, you're presented with a gold pin that flew in space. So we all wear the the uh, Mercury 7 insignia, which I think is um, very well designed. It's a beautiful insignia. And the jacket you're wearing? The jacket that I'm wearing has not been worn in at least 15 years, but I will say that about 20 years ago I wore this to my astronaut interview, and it's been hanging in my closet. I don't want to get rid of it. It has a very special uh, significance to it. It's, it's close to NASA Blue as I could find at the time, and uh, pulled it out of the closet for the induction ceremony. You seem, you know, it's not about you, but you're the first moon commander and pilot. Uh, what does that mean to be a role model to a lot of young girls uh, who you know, want to pursue a career in space? Uh, you know, astronauts are role models. Whether we like it or not, we're here and we are role models. And we can go out and spread the message. Or, you know, some astronauts are more introverted than others, and it is a little bit tough to go out and do a public speaking thing. But I think if you have a lot of passion about what you believe in, it becomes easier. So I try to take that passion that I have for the space program, as well as for engineering and science in general, and try to spread that to people. I talk about young people because they have yet to choose their careers, but this is for the adult population, regardless of your age. I think all of us can learn more about what you know, what we do in space and why it's important to do that. Uh, talk to me about the, the return to flight uh, in 2005. Was there a lot of pressure? Uh, was it intense uh, time? Well, in 2003, uh, when we lost Columbia, my crew was five weeks from the launch. So we uh, hung together as a crew mostly. We helped support the families. We helped support the accident investigation. But um, some of the crew members were changed, but eventually in two and a half years, we flew. It was probably the most difficult time of my life as far as my professional life. Um, there was very difficult decisions to make. Um, at times, emotions ran high. Obviously, we lost seven of our friends, and that was just, you don't get over that. Um, but I was committed to flying, and I remember telling my training manager, if it takes 10 years, I'm going to fly this mission. I am not giving up. But we're going to wait until we have fixed everything on the shuttle that needs to be fixed, so we, we are flying with a spacecraft that we feel very, very confident in.
So it took a while to do that, and I think it pulled us all together in the end and made us a better, stronger team. Eileen, you mentioned uh, you know, being committed to the There's Some people out there right now that might be a little discouraged given the current state of the American U.S. space program. As a role model, what would you say to the young men and women out there that are looking to be future astronauts? Okay, I would say if you're interested in being an astronaut, do not be discouraged. This is a good time, especially if you're in college. Uh, there is a program, it's just not as visible right now. In fact, at this point in time, NASA is getting ready to announce a new class. Now, the current astronauts fly on the space station because they launch out of Russia. We don't hear as much about them. But there is really two programs coming up. One of them is to low Earth orbit, which is more private enterprise flying our astronauts to and from the space station. The other side of human space flight is deep space, and that's the space launch system that is being designed by NASA now. They're building the Orion capsule where the astronauts will live. This is going to take us deep space, whether it's the asteroid, the actual moon on Mars, it's that capability in any of those places. So it's a very exciting time. I would major in geology if I was in college now and I wanted to be an astronaut. with this field experience, as well as engineering, and being the kind of person that can tinker with things and fix things, those are going to be important skills for future astronauts. I mean, over at the hall um, last night, you may have seen that there are exhibits devoted to each of the members. How do you imagine your own exhibit coming together? What do you hope is highlighted? Okay, um, I'm going to take a look at that. Unfortunately, because of the nature of last night, I didn't get a chance to really get a closer look at those. But in the past, I do remember that astronauts have donated um, things from their professional life, uh, flown items, and anything that might be of interest to the public. So I do have uh, quite a collection that is spread out all over the place because I'm trying to keep it safe. I don't want the whole thing to burn up in a wildfire somewhere. So I have spread it out, but I have yet to really catalog everything I have. Shuttle astronauts can not keep any flown um, item that actually belongs to the shuttle program. So, so I have my clothes, my personal things, and I have quite a large collection of shuttle uh, engineering drawings, training manuals, um, backup flight data file that did not fly in space. I saved all of it. And I have, I can't even tell you how much I have, because it's quite a bit. But someday I will donate all of this, and I think it, it uh, really belongs to the American people. But because they were the missions that I flew, I'd like there to be kind of an individual, or maybe a personal touch to it. Uh, well, the suit. Oh, this suit. Oh, yeah. I'll have to figure out what to, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna donate it. I almost took it to Goodwill, and and it's a nice suit. I would, but just because it has a special meaning, I'm not gonna donate it. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for being here.